So one of the big concerns with marks was how do we determine the value of an object, the value of a commodity? Is there some kind of concrete way we can uh, define that pretty much sets the standard as to how we determine the value of an object? And Marx broke this down and he said that the defining characteristic was labor. Labor was what turned a one dollar um, bar of iron into a ten dollar set of iron poles or a fifty dollar set of iron needles or a one hundred dollar circuit board. All of those things were produced by an input of worker labor and it's uh, directly proportional to the amount of labor involved. It takes a longer amount of time and more work for a worker to turn an iron bar uh, an iron bar into a set of iron poles versus a set of iron needles. It takes them a lot longer to turn that into a circuit board. So the price of a commodity is generally proportional to the amount of labor that went into making that object. But how are these objects valued? What does it mean to have value? Well, there are two kinds of value. Uh, but value is essentially the worth of a commodity. We have two kinds of worth, two kinds of values. There's use value, which is the value of a commodity determined by its usefulness. You can use iron poles in a lot of different situations. You can use iron needles in a lot of different situations. Same thing with circuit boards. All of these things have use values. All of these things are extremely useful to society and will therefore be in high demand. But there's also exchange value, which is the value of a commodity determined by its exchange with an another commodity. So in our last episode, when we talked about the clocks, we had the clock priced at $10. In this example, we have a bartering system to uh, show you what exchange value looks like. Exchange value is the value of an object when used to exchange it with another object. So our $10 clock can be exchanged with a $10 pair of iron poles. But it's very inconvenient for a lot of people to go around carrying iron poles or clocks as a form of currency. And so this is where money comes in. Money is called by Marx the universal commodity because it is essentially the avenue uh, with which we use to barter for the goods we really want. After all, if you have a big pile of money, it doesn't really have very much use value uh, unless you want to use it for, I don't know, like kindling, but it does have a tremendous amount of exchange value, which is why money is called in Marxist terms the universal commodity. It's used to exchange with all other goods. And obviously, this is because money is easier to carry around, easier to deal with, than a system that uh, deals with raw materials and bartering as its form of exchange on a market. So all that is to say uh, value is determined by the input of labor by a worker. There is use value which is essentially how useful an object is, a way of looking at the value of an object. There's also exchange value which is another way of looking at an object's value which is essentially saying how much money or how many iron poles can I get from exchanging this commodity on a market. 
So, I hope that helps clear up why Marxists talk about value, exchange value, and use value, how value is derived from labor, and how this forms the crux of Marx's own labor theory of value. So in part three, we might talk about the labor theory of value. So stay tuned for that.